We're on the set with Murdoch, at Murdoch Mysteries talking about how when the show first aired, there were no historical period pieces, especially there, procedurals. Yeah, there were really no period shows when we first started out. And, um, so it was a bit of a, it was a, bit of a gamble. And, and a funny thing happened uh, on the way to work. Um, a lot of other shows sort of popped up. Um, Sherlock Holmes came back uh, uh, as a feature film. Mm -hmm. Guy Ritchie did uh, uh, with Robert Downey Jr. And I like to think they borrowed a lot of our style, uh, uh, but did it with a lot more money. Uh, but uh, yeah, since then, you know, there's been a spate of shows, a lot of period stuff, procedural and otherwise, and um, it's been fun, you know, to ride, ride that wave. Our show's distributed all over the world now, and we have, you know, huge ratings here at home, and couldn't be happier. Do you watch the BBC Ripper Street, and do you check to see how accurate they're being? I, I honestly, I don't have any time to watch television. I'm, I'm here 14 hours and then I'm at home learning lines for the next day and sh showering and eating. Okay. And did you see the previous TV movies based on Murdoch or did you read the books? I did. I, did. I saw them and, uh, and I quite enjoyed it. it. We're doing something fairly different. I mean, even at the time, I was like, well, okay, let me wrap my head around this. And uh, luckily, uh, uh, most of the way through the process, they said, you know, pay, don't pay attention to any of that. We're doing something pretty different okay. and do this. And so I had to sort of put that out of my head. Uh, and, and I was glad, you know, uh, uh, Peter Outerbridge is a terrific actor and a friend. And it, it was just, it was different instead of here's a new guy doing the same thing. So I was really glad. Okay, that's great. I know the writer's room tries to keep the details to within a few years of actual historical creations. What uh, scientific fact most surprised you when it came across your script? Oh man, one of the things that I think, uh, and I don't know that a lot of people know this, was how aggressive uh, a businessman Edison was and how he was uh, he would hoard patents and, and, and really, really uh, was very vigilant in protecting all of his patents and his inventions. And he, he, was, uh, he was a tyrant. What about Toronto, the history of Toronto? Has there been any surprising facts that you've learned? Well, not a huge amount of surprising stuff, but just seeing how it related to the rest of the uh, uh, big cities on the Great Lakes and how trade, you know, during the era was, uh, was so important uh, via the lakes and then later on by rail. Um, it, it just sort of ties in all these different places and why they were such big hubs at one time and then with the advent of, of trucking and, and shipping, it all just sort of died down and, and you have these leftover towns that at one time were these incredible, uh, ostentatious Victorian uh, uh, vistas that uh, are now no longer, you know, towns that don't have as much going on anymore. What's been the biggest challenge in playing a period piece for you? Biggest challenge is, is the clothing. I got it. That was my second question. Which piece of it's, wardrobe has been the most challenging for you? Yeah, it's, it's like we like to say we act for free, but they pay us to sweat. <laughs> How has your character changed over the seven seasons? Well, a big part of what um, I built into the character, and obviously the writers did, was. How, how Murdoch sort of is watching the world develop and change around him, how, how you know, uh, socioeconomic things uh, impact uh, uh, people, and how, you know, your, your standing in society really can either limit you or, or propel you, and, and Murdoch's a sympathetic person, so he would see people over the years being treated unjustly or, or getting away with things, and, and, you know, I think he's become more... Um, his religious views, I think, have broadened a little bit. He's, he's empathetic to a lot of people who didn't have the same type of background as he did. And, um, and I think that's important. I think, you know, we, we sort of transport the viewer through a lot of these current day uh, debates, and current day uh, uh, problems, if you will. And I think ending on a positive note and, and growing and, and becoming more socially responsible is, is, is sort of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned Edison. What historical figure has been your favorite on the series so far? Boy, I, I think having Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and his, his pet uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes weaving in and out of the show is a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, can't lie, I really enjoy it. Uh, having James, 
uh, Pendrick come through and, and uh, you know, whatever he's up to this month, you know, and he puts his whole heart into it. And that's a lot of fun because it's always something new and yeah. different. Well, you've got a longer season this time. You've had shorter seasons. What have you done in the uh, hiatus? Um, well, work-wise, I, I try to stay busy. Um, you know, try to look ahead to either yeah, we'll what take, will be like, you know, after yeah. Murdoch, which doesn't seem to happen, <laughs> or uh, or things that I can fit in between. Um, there are a few projects that uh, my wife and I are always sort of pushing forward. It takes a lot of time. There's a lot yeah. of development. Um, also, uh, I've done another uh, show for the CBC, trying to do something completely different. Okay. You're talking about a project that's quite different to what you're doing for the CBC. If you'd like to elaborate on that? After seven years of doing um, Murdoch Mysteries, um, it's always important to try to find things that are very different. And so I uh, got on board with a project called um, The Adventures of Napkin Man. It couldn't be more different. It's a kids' show and educational program that helps uh, kids sort of deal with their feelings. And uh, what drew me to it was that um, I get to sort of I play a teacher in live action, but um, there's also a, an animated aspect to the show, and I voice that uh, animated character. But he also sings, so oh. I, I was able to sing uh, uh, almost 30 songs. And I had you know, a bunch of training, and um, it was really hard. But in the end, it, it turns out I can sing, so it was uh, it was really exciting for me. And. Uh, Congratulations on being part of an Indiegogo project that got funded, Static the Movie. Uh, can you tell us anything about that? Yeah, I'm really interested in doing the, uh, the uh, project Static with uh, Tanya and Keith and, uh, and the guys. It's, you know, a, a big part of what we do in Canada is try to encourage, um, you know, our own, try to encourage creativity here and help, uh, um, you know, foster talent and, and also just let people tell their story. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to do that anytime, and I'm looking forward to it. One final question. You've talked about a couple of future projects. Is there anything you'd like to see Murdoch do before the end of the, se the series? Well, it's funny. You know, after all this time, they've had Murdoch in so many different situations. I can't even, you know, when we started out, I could have said, ah, you know, one of these days they'll invent a plane. <laughs> one of these days, of the, but holy cow, we have done all of that. So I'm just, I'm, it's, it's, I, I have no idea what they could come up with next. And they always do. They always come up with something else. Uh, over land and sea and underground. And is, you know, it's really amazing. It, it's been a hell of a journey. Thank you very much.